Okay, good evening everyone. As I promised that I'm going to go ahead and then make my the second part of the, that pre, uh, yesterday's video. Okay, so let's see. Okay, yeah. So, not this one, okay. Okay, let's go ahead and get this started and then have a look at our homework, okay. Here, uh, uh, in our assignment, in our homework three, we did this one, number one, part A, B, we did. We are on part two, the question number two, correlation between perimeter mean texture mean, obtain the correlation, interpret the correlation, what is the 95% confidence interval, what is the 75% confidence interval. We are over here, obtain correlation coefficient, okay. So let's go ahead and look at uh, our program. Look at, I have all the data already imported. Okay, packages to install. And question number one, part A, part A, one, two, three, one, two, sorry, one and two, one in done in several ways. Okay, this part A, A in done in several ways. See? Then how to find the histogram for each variable? So we discussed that one. Then part uh, question part A, part A Roman numerals two, obtain five number summaries. Various ways of obtaining five number summary, separately and together. See, see together. We did that one. See, can pick it up. See, you can calculate that uh, five number summary for both. Uh, quantitative variables, not the quantitative and the categorical here, the both are quantitative variables can be that uh, their fine number summaries can be evaluated like this. Okay. Okay. Then uh, B, categorical variables, box plot. Then uh, we get the frequency table, part B, Roman numerals 2. Part three, obtain the mean and standard deviation of perimeter mean uh, by aggregated by diagnosis. Okay. Both mean and standard deviation together, you can tackle this way. Or this way, we talk about that one, filtering, malignant ones, benign ones. Some malignant means like a, the, the sick patients, disease patients, these are healthy patients. Then on the extras that we talk about this one. And question number two, correlation. Correlation you can evaluate it several ways using the co. See, with the aid of this, what is the correlation between the perimeter mean and texture mean? Then with the aid of the standardized value. And then this works on B1, did not work on my, my that my on my R, but it works on the data camp sandbox in UCLA textbook. Okay. But I create another way to calculate the slope. For that one, we calculated all these. We did all these last time. See, in order to calculate, if you want to intercept, you can calculate as well. See? And if you want to bootstrap that one, you can do that one too. With the aid of instead of B1, I'm using now slope, the newly created function. I created this one. So with the aid of the, that, they are forming. Okay, so on everything we discussed that one. Then uh, uh, then with the aid of the school that uh, an over table, that's the pre regression go to regression model. Sometimes this might not gonna work either pre, but it doesn't matter. You can get the pre like this way or go and read the pre from the that uh, manova table. See, so sorry, anova table. 
from that one, you can easily get that to uh, free. If this doesn't work, you can say, see, you can run, see, copy. Or you can get supernova, see, supernova, on supernova on the regression model, and then get the pre and the square root of pre. QRP pre value. See, you can get that one. You can run. But the pre you cannot run, okay? You have to give the value. Square root of that one. Okay. So let's see whether we can run regression model. There is a regression model. Regression model. I'm talking about the original model. Regression model. <laughs> no, not this one. There is a regression model. Did we give the name somewhere? Okay, if we haven't done that one, okay, we can talk about that one. Yeah, okay. I'm talking about, sorry, not this one. Uh, this one, I'm going to get this one. Copy, intercept, and uh, here we they say the regression model. Regression model, where's the regression model? Yeah, I'm gonna write regression model. <laughs> Some call regression, regression dot model in a science, this one on LM texture mean. That one equation model. Yeah. Pre might not gonna work, you know that the pre could be fine. But uh, go to the regression model and then uh, or supernova. See? Okay, we, let's install supernova. Let's go supernova. Okay, then go over here. Model. See, what are the pre value point one zero eight six point one zero eight six? Still, you get the same as point thirty two means thirty three. See, and then our table two, if you want, you can do see. Then they ask about that uh, definition, okay? Definition. And R, I'm going to write over here another one, okay? Now look at what I'm going to write, okay? Another way to calculate correlation coefficient which is R. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and say R is nothing but 
covariance. I'm going to go to the formula. Covariance between what and what? Perimeter mean and see? Perimeter mean and texture mean. See? Copy. Try this one. Come on. Texture mean divided by standard deviation no. divided by divided by standard deviation no. look at this one to get the denominator standard deviation of this guy times times standard deviation of texture mean see and close it okay Okay. The covariance of perimeter mean, this one, perimeter mean and texture mean, that should be divided by standard deviation of the perimeter mean. No, this one standard deviation of the perimeter mean time standard deviation of this one divided by the okay. This thing is not found. Okay. I'm gonna go back to the install that necessary. See? Mosaic will not be installed. This is so bad. Bad, bad. Question number two. Party. Yeah, still on party. So, no. Found. The standard deviation of perimeter mean. Texture mean. <laughs> Hold on. See, see, covariance, see, see this one, covariance. Why? Covariance, perimeter mean. This one, I'm going to write this one. Let me check this one separately. Extremely not found. Okay, okay, I know what happened. Okay. Okay, no, it's not right. Yeah, that's right. Data. That's the problem. Data. That's the problem. Here. Yeah. That will go to this. That will go to this. Data, perimeter mean, data, texture mean. It's okay. See, that's the same thing. That's the same thing. See, see, that's the same thing. It is very similar to, it's very similar to what we were talking about. Okay. Similar to. Mm. 
So R given by covariance of x comma y over standard deviation of x standard deviation of y. It's the one with another way. M minus summation of x minus x bar, y minus y bar, or summation of x minus x bar squared, summation y minus y bar squared, square root. It's not. Is something that we have no Just R equal summation x minus x bar times y minus y bar over square root summation x minus x bar squared times summation y minus y bar square. See, another way to calculate. Y minus y bar square. The square. So, we get that equal to this is not a way to calculate. So instead of this one, you can say sum of sum between what and what x x is this one. See. If it's nothing but go to data, perimeter mean, see, see, minus, we're going to find the mean of see, the same guy, mean of the perimeter mean. See, 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 perimeter mean minus mean of the perimeter mean times, see. Then the other one, texture mean minus mean of same thing, texture mean, see, mean of texture mean, texture mean, see. see. The, the perimeter mean minus mean of that one times okay data data so texture mean minus mean of this one that's the numerator that's the numerator okay. that's the numerator so divided by okay, square root of square root common for both of them you're gonna go and put the sum Sum of what and what? Sum of this guy. Okay. This one. Okay. Sum of data perimeter mean minus the mean of this one. Okay. Squared. And Instead of this one, instead of that one, okay, then I'm going to say some of up to this one, copy, paste, some of data instead of that one, texture mean, texture mean, mean of data, texture. Mean. Square. 
There's another one. This song. Unmatched opening bracket. See, some. Some of data mean. This one. Data mean. Data texture. This one. Close it. Close it. Okay. As for the sum. This. Minus that. Okay. That one. Close it. And then you open. Then close it. Then this one. Hopefully this should work. Yeah. I'm going to call this last uh, numerator num jc num this one we can say denominator then okay take that off this one Let's try this one and see. Okay, data sum. Data parameter mean minus mean of the parameter mean. Translate the text mean minus the text mean. Um, Parameter mean reading minus its mean. Then the text mean minus mean no. That one. This one. Then it's okay. The issue. Yes. Okay. Then. I'm going to get the both first. I'm going to get rid of this one. This work. I'm going to call this one. Car, um, car. Oh no, no, that's not right. Oh, Let me see. No, it's really the same there. No. Some. Data perimeter mean. No, here is the issue. Square first and then close it. So we're going to square first. First and then close it. And then go to sum. That's the problem. Okay, sum. 
data perimeter mean minus this one. This one. Okay, now I'm gonna square. Okay, now square. First get the difference and then square. Okay, then find the sum. Good. Then this one minus this one. Minus this one. This one. Minus that one. Then square. And close it. And now, you know, still have an issue. You have to sum. I think that this one. Some data. So with the denominator is easy, then we can see if you make any mistake. Part by part, let's build up part by part, okay? I'm gonna call one part, it's easy. Okay, so we got this one, okay. I'm gonna call this one numerator, numerator. You have some, this one, okay? This is x minus x bar, y minus y bar. X minus X bar. So X X bar. See, I put that. See. X minus X bar. Mm -hmm. Then we should not sum it. And that's the problem. Okay. Then y minus y bar okay y minus y bar then we're gonna sum this one to block this one this one to sum This one. This one. This product. This one. This one. Some. That's right now. So this one three. Okay, let's run that one. And let's see if now no. So no. no. Okay, now we saw much, that much. Okay, then go to the denominator, then. Under square root. I'm gonna keep this one for square root. Under square root. This one. And this one. If it's minus x bar squared, then okay. I'm going to keep for this one sum. This guy minus should not have that one. This is the difference up to here. That difference should be squared. 
you saw that, see, this is the point estimate, this is the interval estimate. In addition to that one, you see some numbers. I want to talk about those numbers as well. Okay, you see T, you see degrees of freedom, you see T value. So anyhow, let's look at this one to get it done in another way, confidence interval. I'm talking about this part, okay? Confidence interval, okay? Let's build this up. Okay. We know that we so far we know that population, see, population correlation, correlation, no coefficient, okay, correlation coefficient is low. And uh, correlation is R. Okay. Then I'm interested in the correlation of the confidence interval for this guy, you see. Correlation of coefficient. Sorry, co co sample correlation is R, population correlation is O. And I'm interested in confidence interval for population correlation. I can say like this. Since R does not follow a well shaped normal distribution. Well shaped shape normal distribution distribution and And um, um, okay. get the only The confidence interval of a goal of row. Requires the following three steps, okay? Okay. First step, one word
Inspect. Convert. R into Z. Using Fisher's E transformation. That means you're going to get Z point five table in. 1 plus r divided by 1 minus r. Transformation which is the cross point five times at length one plus r okay. which is distributed according to normal it's zero and one okay. now you're gonna do what you're gonna do you're gonna construct the confidence interval for c not for rho okay to compute confidence intervals using the resulting C values. I would say confidence interval for Z, nothing but V this one I'm gonna call C ops. This one also ops. R also ops ops. Ops okay. Ops. Ops are well. Based on that one, okay. so based on that one, what we're going to do that uh, I'm going to say minus VC times the standard data. Okay. Standard data. Standard data, come on, Z. Ops plus DC times the standard error. Where VC, you know, critical value or table value cut off value. Based on the okay. based on the coefficient of coefficient of confidence, which is one minus r. Mm -hmm. Cut off value based on the coefficient of confidence one minus one.
Okay. standard data. Standard. Which is in this case is nothing but one over square root n minus three. This one is nothing but number of pairs, okay? Number of pairs, which is in our case, 569. See? You know CC value, you know absurd value. Then see, you can easily, but then what are you gonna do? I don't need the confidence interval for Z. I need the confidence interval for rho. So I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna convert the confidence interval in terms of C back into Nine hundred sixty nine. See back into R value. How do you do that? Part? Now R is nothing but e 2 times c minus 1 divided by e 2 times c plus 1. See, exponent is nothing but hyperbolic tangent of c. But you don't have to worry about that one, okay? So hyperbolic tangent of C. If you particularly if you want to know what this means. Probably C. And then of C. Hyperbolic tangent of C. C. Tangent of C. Okay. So that means your lower bound and upper bound would be what? See? If you know the Z value, do you know C value? Yes. See, this value is nothing but whole thing is C. See, confidence into C low. C lower bound. This one is a C upper one, see? C upper one. C lower. This one is C upper one. I think some line came in. Okay, something wrong with this pen. Okay. Z. This one is C low. So with the aid of this formula, now you can easily say R is nothing but because I didn't need everything in R. See? See? Now R has to go there. I can remember we had been R. See? Now we can write this one in what? Confidence interval for yeah, for confidence interval for rho. It's nothing but I'm gonna write the lower bound. E to the power of two times. ZL, see, 
minus 1 into the power 2 times here plus 1. The other one into the power two times the upper bound minus one or into the power two the upper bound plus one. This is one. See, that's what we did. See, so that's what we did. You built up the CEO. Can you build up the CEO? Yes, we built up the CEO. Okay. So we built up ZL. CL is this one. Okay. Can you build up this? C OBS. C OBS is this what? See, first you built up R. Okay. C OBS. In order to do that one, you use the R OBS. R OBS. You're going to plug in into this one. You get the C OBS. That C OBS you're going to get into this formula. And then build up ZL. Okay? That's what we are trying to do over here. See? I got the C. My R is this one. Okay? Then 0.5 times log 1 plus R, 1 minus R. Okay? This formula. 0.5 times 1 minus log LN means log 1 plus R divided by 1 minus R. Okay? I get C. Okay? C. Then I need what? Z lower bound. Z lower bound. Z lower bound is nothing but according to this formula, that Z value minus critical value times the standard error. Standard error is this one. Okay. So critical value is Q norm 0.975 okay, times 1 over square root perimeter stats N minus 3. Okay. N minus 3. Okay. I'm going to get the C lower bound and its counterpart you get the and you're going to get the row lower bound related to that one row lower bound is what exponential 2 times ZLZ minus C divided by this one then I'm going to convert at the same time this, that lower bound see this one see it's lower bound I'm going to convert that one too. I'm going to calculate that one too. See, it's lower bound. See, 0.25, see, exactly the same value, see. 0 0.25, 42, 0 0.25, 44, 47, see, look at. Then I do the same thing for upper bound. I got Z, C put it back to R. Look at, 0 0.40, 0 0.40, 0 0.40. Same thing, see, interval estimate of getting this one in another way. That's the standard way of getting that one. That's the one that they have embedded within the program, okay? So it's clear now, okay? Then now, then part D. Part D, what is the 75 confidence? You can get the confidence in the one using the core test, see, 75% that one. And the, or this one, okay? So your value is going to be where to where? If it is 75%, point 0.29 to point 0.37. I rounded that one to two decimal places. It's like that. Then are you confident that the true population correlation could be zero? Part E. What that means? What that means? Excuse me. Look at this table. You have over here degrees of freedom. You have a p value. You have a t value. What is this t value? Let's say what this means. And now, before we're going to go ahead and answer this question of uh, question E, they say whether are you confident that the true population co correlation could be zero? Could be zero. See? Could be zero. So, I go back. 
this one related to homework. Related to part A, question number two, part two, part two, okay. and this one, question number two, part C and D. Okay, and the confidence interval. And the last one, 2E, okay? Question number 2E. The 2 and e. C. How to answer this one? Let's say that they're going to ask a very different thing. They're going to ask, this time we have to hypothesize. We, I talk about this one in other video to signal hypothesis. Rho gonna be zero versus its counterpart rho not equal zero see copulation correlation zero we have to check whether which one we're gonna accept which one we're gonna take out see we can remember this one okay null hypothesis this one Alternative See, I got this up. See, you want it. See, I got this. Sometimes we're going to call this one two-tailed test, okay? Two-tailed, it has a two-tailed. Based on that, to both sides, okay? We're going to talk about that one, okay? Two-tailed distribution, okay? That means, if you're going to use the T-distribution, I use the T-distribution, okay? T, this, these regions on both sides, those are called the rejection. H naught, okay, H naught rejection region. This side and this side. Rejection region, H naught, H naught rejection region. Rejection the center we can remember acceptance region, right? Confidence region. Confidence region. It's not acceptance region, it's not. Confidence.
with confidence of the middle part. It will be decided by what? Level of generally is constant for con my con minus alpha. This one is alpha over two. This is alpha over two. Okay. As an example, see this one point nine five. This one point oh five divided by two, which is point oh twenty five. This one point oh five divided by two, which is point oh twenty five. Four five okay four five divided by two point four twenty five like that okay it's related to the confidence interval its counterpart called the rejection region testing see in order to test this one we really need the test statistic. Something called test statistic to run. Sometimes we call this a test variable. Mm -hmm. the test statistics or test variable to run the test. Mm -hmm. the test, what is the test statistic? Look at the test statistic. P equals R ropes times square root in minus two. Over one minus r ops square. This distribution follow t distribution with degrees of freedom in minus two. See? This is nothing but the degrees of freedom of error. It's the same thing. So one thing, how do you run this decision rule? Okay. How do you decide that okay. decision rule? Okay. Based on what? You reject H naught. See, first one, we reject H naught if. Hypothesized population correlation, which is rho, is outside of the confidence interval for rho.
for relation which is rho equals zero, no? So zero is outside of it. This is one way. The other one, see? We reject this not if P is key value on the top. See? Greater than PC. PC, critical value. See? Critical T. Third one, we reject H naught if key value. It's extremely small. P value less than alpha, let's say point oh five. Okay. Then how do you get the P value? P value is nothing but no T C T C what's the What's the code for this one? Q, see, QT, you can give in R code, QT, can you remember? QT, you can give the area to the left of that one. Let's say that you want to go point nine seven five, and degrees of freedom is N, N is 5 under 69 minus 2. See? N minus 2. That's how you're going to get that. The T, T already you can calculate. See, we have a formula to calculate T. See, this T, this T, you calculate. You get the QT, your TC, critical value, and then compare. And what do you mean by the P value? How do you get the P value? P value is nothing but P value. This is your T, T. T. I'm going to call that one T ups. Okay. I'm going to call it this one T ups. This one T ups. This one minus T ups. Here you have the zero. This T distribution. This area, okay? extreme than T of area for what? P value is the probability That we select P values extreme than more than okay more or less okay we put the no it's not right I don't go like that.
Then we observe that means. Probability is equal to greater than P of and you're going to double it for both sides. That's the P value. I draw here this one. It's T again. Based on the PC, see, critical value is what? Level of significance. Probability, I'm going to put this on probability that P value is uh, extreme than PC. Alpha, okay, alpha. Probability. Probability that P values are extreme then. You see? So alpha is nothing but two times probability P greater than T C That's the level of significance. That's another name. Rejection region. Can we? Can we get all these values from the R here? Let's go back. We have that one on the printout. Can you run? We have that one. See, you have a T value, you have this one, you have a P value. Let's say that, okay? See, I'm going to calculate this one. I'm going to go ahead and get the degrees of freedom. 
from that table. See, I'm gonna run the ANOVA table. See, this regression, regression mode, supernova, and uh, we already run the ANOVA table already. See, it's an R from the ANOVA table. I'm gonna get the degrees of freedom. See, 567. T is nothing but, see, T is nothing but T OBS, okay? I'm looking for the T U. R times n minus two times n minus two means degrees of freedom one minus R square. Okay, one minus R square. So, okay, degrees of freedom one minus R square. This one. Look at eight point thirty two. See, that's the value display over there. See, that's the observed value. 567 degrees of freedom. You saw that now. This one is over there too. See? Then let's check the p-value. How to get the p-value? As I said, two times, see? If you want, you can say probability of t, 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 okay? Probability. You're looking for the probability. Less than, see? Greater than that to other side though. Less than this side. Doesn't matter which side is. See? P-value is greater than this one or both, both for both cases okay or, or you can say the value is two times probability be less than minus t of Two times probability of t, e t. No, you get the t t, e t. See, you get the t t. See, e t and degrees of freedom. See, you put the p t in R code. Okay, the R code. E t negative t of and degrees of freedom. No further. In R. Here, in R, this one is given by two times Pt No, this one, area to the right is, the area to the Area to the left always they take. There's no such thing to this one, okay? So, therefore, I'm gonna take this out. That's the same thing, okay? That's the same thing. So, calculate with the area to the left, that point. See, that point. That point. If you get this one with respect to this one, it's gonna not gonna give this one. They're gonna give this area. They have to be careful. See? I need, need the, this one, area to the left of this guy. Not the area to the right of me. You can write that one as a definition, but when you get to R, you put like that. Same way in P value, okay? Same way alpha. Alpha is nothing but <laughs> or you can say alpha is two times uh, ET no, probability, sorry, probability is Less than negative T C then R how do you get this one? R you're gonna see T T negative T C degrees of freedom no favor. Okay, so since I have already then calculated that, uh, sorry, this uh, t value the, and negative times 567. No, you can see this one, BFE. This one is a high t of t. Okay, paste. See, look at zero, almost zero. See, almost zero. 
16 power, so 16 power, 6 point something, but here 7 point something. That was in the same thing. Now we can say, with the aid of any of these confidence intervals, see, three methods we can utilize. I'm going to utilize this one. I'm going to see my hypothesis of rho equals zero going to be within this one or outside the confidence interval. We are 95% confident that we reject H0 rho population correlation to zero since the hypothesized population correlation, which is rho equals zero, is outside the confidence interval for the population correlation. See? Outside this point too high. Therefore, we reject H0. That's a rare high confidence would be zero. No. See? It cannot see. Since P value of the correlation is zero, test which population correlation is zero, which is this one. Similarly, we reject H0 and infer that the population correlation must be at the either level of significance, 0 0.25 or 0 0.25. 0 0.25, when we're going to consider 95%, 0 0.25, we're going to consider the 75%. Okay, that's another way. The third way that you can compare what? TC. TC. Look at the TC. How do you get the TC? TC value, critical value. How do you get the critical value? You can remember, see? If you want, you can get the TC as well too. T, TC. I'm going to say T sub C. Sub C is nothing but you get the P. Sorry. QT. QT. You put the area to the right of 0.025. Uh, degrees of freedom means degrees of freedom. DF underscore E. And recall T plus plus C. Negative 1.96. See? And it's positive value you can check. See, therefore, that see, it's a negative TC. Positive TC should be 1.96. So another way to we can tell this one since third method. Since uh, observed T, observed T, which is how much? Observed T. See, this one. Observed T, which is in my case 8.3241. Observed T, this one. See. Observed T. No. no. This much is greater than PC critical value, which is if we see where is one point nine six PC. You reject H not. You reject H not. And in further, the power position is not zero at the either level. Either. Okay. Another way to have a look at method one, method two. This value you don't have to calculate. So you can calculate this value, but you don't have to calculate this one. I show you this one you don't have to calculate, but it's already in that printout. See, once you run the core test, this one given, this one given, key value given, but at the other hand, we know how to get it done in another way too. Okay. And the Let's move on to question number three. Question number three, we already done one. See, part A, B, C, C, B, C, C, B, 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 B,
Okay, so how many meters? C, still C. And then uh, question number four. Hit the linear model with the parameter mean as the outcome and diagnosis as the explanatory variable. See, diagnosis this thing. Okay, so you fit in this one. Okay, A, a summary, supernova. Supernova. Why they don't have a supernova? Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and install them. Okay, number four. Number four, see, she did the summary. See, summary even thing, estimate. It's a standard, this is a B naught. B naught standard error means standard deviation of the, the sampling distribution. This is a absurd value. See, T, y, y T like that. No, you can have a look at it, Y T like that. Good. Y T like that. Y T P is nothing but see, nothing but this value B divided by the standard error. How do you get the standard error of B naught? We can remember. We have a formula. Can we remember? We have a formula. We have a formula. See? We have a formula, but we, we we don't have to go that that deeper. But some if you want, you can have a look at it. See, see? you can have a look at it. See. These values, whatever displayed on this one, is B naught. How do you get B naught? We know how to get B. How do you get the standard data? How do you get the T value? How do you get the P value? See? So I'm talking about the, in the B naught, that in B naught, and the same way B1. See? see? This is nothing but, see? See? This is B naught is nothing but the average. Standard error of the average. Okay. Steven, we can calculate if you want, but we, we don't have to go to that one. Okay. Uh, we can get it done by hand even. See? As I see, manually we can do that one. Okay. We do that one over here. Computer can do it manually as well. See? 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 If you want. See? Data one manually. See? Here. Yeah. P1, P1 is Y bar for the benign. See? Confidence interval. See, confidence interval for 0.95, confidence interval for beta 0 would be margin of error. See, plus or minus margin of error. Margin of error is nothing but critical value. See? Standard error. See? Square root of those people. How many people in that part? See, in that benign group. See. So, see here that uh, the, see, then the, it's called the diagonal matrix because of the diag diagnosis matrix, so diagnosis new model, I call the diag model. And if you want, you can run the supernova as well. See. Yeah, that one. And this one, see, this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this one, see. And this is number four, see. see. Number four, talking about now, see. Here you have Y, Y being the other case, perimeter mean, see. This one X diagnosis. Diagnosis. It's a categorical variable. Cat. This one. Quantitative variable. Here we have 
benign is a malignant yes. diagnosis yet We have patients, that number of patients, yes, that number of patients, yes, and be benign ones, and malignant ones, we know, no? And in the beginning, see, we had that uh, frequency table, if you go to the frequency table, you can easily get that number, see, yeah, very remember. Can favorite rest from the favorite statistics that will give you. When you increase this, when we restart the R session. Statistics. Uh, statistics. Um, this one. Uh, okay. Now we have that. Let me see. I'm gonna get that one from that. Uh, we have a 357. Okay. The nice K57 malignant we have to clear this and then see then this is the Y bar of the nine this this is the Y bar of malignant this gap is the B one this one is the B node We notice white one. See? We notice nothing but white. See? White bar. White bar means if you go to mean of what? If you go to data, and from the data, you can shoot it so manually, but I'm trying to say that this connector to that one. Go to Y bar mean data and perimeter mean, see. And the standard error of B not see, nothing but the standard error. And the error means sigma of y bar, okay? And a deviation of y bar, see? And a deviation of y bar, y bar b.
This one, this one, not the mean one. Oh, this one, we read the mean of in viva in in B group. Okay, then I. Understand the deviation of both of that. Then you go to perimeter mean. You're gonna check in B group like that. Okay, then we can get it done by what you say over here, okay? You can calculate. Beta not, beta not plus or minus margin of error. See, margin of error is nothing but critical value times the standard deviation of B divided by square root of N. So I'm gonna go ahead and then get the favorite statistic of this one. See, both diagnosis benign and malignant. I need that margin of error, Q norm 0.75. Go to the stat 1818 is this one. Standard deviation divided by square root of 19. That would be that one. And upper bound is what? That Step y bar plus or minus that 79 lower bound 76. Is that what we got from this one? Pump hint, yeah. See 76 and 79 for beta no. So the beta one, beta one, look at the beta one. Beta 1, see, again, then we got the beta 1 is the difference between those two. So this one, so in another way, see, this one means that, see, y bar b, see, this one, this one, in another way, standard deviation of a b group divided by the mb. See, that's what they say, see, like that. When I'm so the other one, B1, see? B1, see? The malignant one minus the benign one, you see? This one, see? This one. And the margin of error for that group, see? Margin of error, easily you can write CC times SC of B0. Let's see, critical value of that one, standard error, B naught, which is SB over square root that one. If you put the B1, look at the B1. B1 is nothing but Y bar malignant minus Y bar benign. See? And standard error of that B1 is nothing but and the deviation of B1, how do you find it? Square root okay, in, sorry, S, oh, sorry, S of benign square over N benign plus S sub malignant square over N, N the square root. That's the formula, say. Okay. I'm going to add those two and then find the square root of that. Sorry, this one, N, 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 N. That's the one, well, that's what we are trying to do over here, see? 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 Margin of error means this one minus the margin of error. Margin of error is critical value this time, standard error. And the standard error is critical value of square root 
<laughs> SB square divided by NB plus SM square. So in order to calculate that, so on margin of error, see, you go to the critical value, get the standard error. Standard error is like that. See, margin of error, abound, abound, low abound, low abound. See, same thing, 34 to 40, 76 to 79. Okay. Oh, you go to this one. Look at what I'm doing now. I'm going to go ahead and see, resample from that one, get that one, and find the confidence interval. See, another way to get it. Then find the confidence on that one. That will produce that to all the data. See, see, 76 to 79, 34 to 40. Another way, see. I'm going to generate, not the just the, see, I'm going to run the, the regression for the, that uh, resample one. For the bootstrap, for that one, I'm going to write the confidence. For the B1 doesn't work on one my one, but if B1 works, okay, if this works, you can get again the same value. In another way, what I'm trying to say, see, I'm sorry, uh, here, see, we got this one into that uh, sandbox. With the sandbox, I'm playing that one. Can you remember yesterday? So let's go ahead and then try to get this done under the sandbox and see whether it's going to work. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get this one. Copy. And then. So let's see. Let me see. This one is the session. This one. See, it ran. Okay, it ran. Then you go ahead and get what? See, upper bound and lower bound. Can you remember we 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 did this one? And you're going to arrange and then get the upper and lower bound. Okay. B1s. The B, B betas, you can arrange that discussion. Oh, sorry. See? My B1 doesn't work on that one. It works on the sandbox. See? And then what? See? 34 to 40. See? Lower bound 34, upper bound 40. Is that what we had on this one? 30, 40, 40, see, look at the same way here, B naught, I go back to the B naught, where's B naught, can I do the same thing over there? Okay, I'm going to try this one, here too, see, oh, Oh, instead of this one, I use a B node now. This one called the B node. Sorry, B node. B node. B node. So B node. B nodes. Okay. And this one also called B node. B node. Okay. This one, okay, see, this one works, this one works, see, that will give you B naught as well as B1, sigma, R squared, everything, even the R squared, see, confidence interval, pre, this is nothing but the pre, see, proportional reduction of pre, is the point estimate, the point 55, is that what we had by running this one in manual table? We have a manual table. Oh, sorry, manual table. See, fifty-five. Same thing. Three. This is three. See, R squared means three. See? This confidence interval has also been given. So, so that one. But this one. Uh, B. I'm sorry. Here. Okay. Uh, here that. Uh, okay. This part doesn't work. I'm going to run this one on the sandbox. 
I'm going to go ahead and run this one on the same go. Okay, arrange. Hopefully, everything should be in order. Okay. Seventy nine, sixty, sixty, seventy six to seventy nine. Seventy six to see. Seventy nine, same. Okay, works too. So this one, this way, this is this way, or this way, you know, and B1, both we can do. Then and I asked about that part. Oh, what is the 99 configure around your slope? Then now it's the same thing you can do with the by changing. Okay, so many methods you have. Okay, you can do this way, this way, see, one shot like that. See? Okay, or oh, like this way. See? Okay, this one, these two you have to run. See. V1 is the point 0.99 this time, okay? See, I get the cutoff value 5 and 996, 996 one because those are 1,000 times 0.25, 1,000 times 0.99. Okay? You know that you put the center that 95%, 99, the rest going to go to the both side, okay? When it comes to the 99, see? In the confidence 99, in 12 confidence, see? You put in the center point nine nine see, see left over point oh one divided by two point zero five zero zero five this one point oh one divided by two point zero zero five if you want this one you're gonna get the area to the left of huh? Zero zero five. Point zero zero five. The other one point nine nine five. Nine nine five. That means hold it. Let's hold in nine nine five. If you want this one, see. If you want this one nine nine five. See. For this one, point oh five. For well, this one, point nine nine five, one point zero zero five. Let's now we calculate that upper bound and lower bound. Okay. So this one, we still to copy this one and go to the sandbox. So, Forty one to thirty three. That what we had forty one to thirty three. Ninety nine, forty one to thirty three. So beta one, beta one, beta one, beta one. No, I don't see that one. Then I see. Okay. Then we run this one. 33 to 40 again. Oops, no. No, this is not right. Um, part C. B not B1. B1, heavy meter, this one, I'm going to run that one more time. Yeah, see, B1, 32 to 41. B1, 32 to 41. Yeah, same thing, 32 to 41, yeah. Yes, 32 to 41, yes. 32 to 41, yes. You got the same thing. And part D, what is the effect size? Expressed as Cohen's D. Ah, see, Cohen's D. Then you can run the Cohen's D. See, I hope that uh, 
going to install that a listener question speak and uh, perimeter diagnosis so then go to this one mean and then just to put like this way no? so i need i need a listener Okay. Then go part D. Part D. Go part D. Roman numerals one. Okay. Let's calculate. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I mean, number four. Four D. Yeah. Perhaps D one. It's not going to do two, perhaps D3. Okay, this is coming from the LSR package. Cohen D. Okay, let's run this one and see where this is going to run. Okay, 2.28. The difference between the malignant and benign patient's parameter mean is on average this many standard deviation. Okay, it has been expressed in standard deviation. You know that one. This, this discussion we did. Okay. How many times ago we did that one? We can recall again. Okay, we can recall again. Thank you. Okay, we can remember. Okay. So let me talk about it. This one. This question number four. Okay. This one. Number four, part C. Then let's go to O R D and one How do you find the coherence? D? Coherence D is nothing but coherence D is Y bar either way. Okay, malignant minus Y bar benign divided by s now we have a question that which has to be utilized it has been expressed in terms of says you put the absolute to say that either way you can now yes which s you're going to utilize hmm? which s you're going to utilize root mean square there can we use the root mean square there can we use the pool error? Can I remember? So S, you can use the root mean squared error. Or you can use S pool. Can I remember S pool? See, still there. Uh, average, see. S average. When n when benign e not equals malignant, you do this. N benign equals n malignant, you do like that. Okay. Like that. Root mean square. You can remember root mean square error. Root mean square error is nothing but mean square error and then square root. This is nothing but sum of square error divided by degrees of freedom of error. This one. From what? From ANOVA table. You can easily get this one. No, what is it? Then how about S pool? Pool is nothing but I'm gonna get the square root on from 
Degrees of freedom of benign group times, variance of that price. Thus, degrees of freedom of malignant group times, variance of malignant group divided by degrees of freedom of benign plus degrees of freedom of benign. Limit. That's the same thing. We're going to say that degrees of freedom is nothing but n benign minus 1 s benign squared. So n malignant minus 1 not this is this right. Times this one plus this one squared and plus the race of freedom of malignant, which is N B minus one. S a nine squared plus and then minus one S N squared and this one N B minus one plus and then minus one which is maybe minus one is squared plus in and minus one in B plus in B minus 2. This is nothing but in in B minus 1. Yes, B square plus in. In minus one is in square divided by n minus two. In minus one. And this one is same. N minus two. Minus two. And this one. See? Degrees of freedom of but error. Huh? In minus two degrees of freedom of error. Oh. 
this would be minus y minus y. Well, this one is nothing but sum of square derivative. Same thing, that's why mean square derivative. Square root mean square derivative. Root mean square derivative, same thing. Okay, same thing. And this average, see? This average, nothing but, see? And that they are same, nothing but see? square root. See? But then what? You simply get the SB squared plus this malignant squared divided by 2. That's, the, that's how you get the back this one. Now, if you write the confidence interval for, see, Cohen's D, I'm going to say Cohen's D, Cohen's D with the B, okay? Cohen's D. D. Okay. So, if you write the confidence interval for B, it's nothing but, see, simple D, see, Oops. Are so minus margin of error means SC plus some standard error of B. Okay. This one for hence B, you can say simple B. Okay, I'm going to say simple B this way. Simple B. Simple B. Where, where the standard data nothing but square root m m plus n p over n m times n b plus d of square. Two times n n plus n b minus two minus two this whole thing times n one plus n b over two times n n plus n b minus two Okay, then okay. So we get that one. Then let's go ahead and run this one. If F size. F size. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go back to here. For instance, I'm on for question number four, part D, Roman numerals one. Okay, Cohen's D. Then I use the Cohen's D. Then the Cohen dot D. Let me see. There is a bit one of those. Cohen ninety nine part two. I use the other formula. Let's see. That's it. Okay, that was okay. okay. Like that. So B two point two nine. Okay. 
सी किस में अनुमान इसी कैलकुलेट पॉइंट वन वन पॉइंट ट्वेंटी एट सो नो नो इस बेस्ड ऑन वैल्यू दे दिस दिस वन ओके पॉइंट्स डी फोर नाइंटी फाइव परसेंट पॉइंट्स डी इट्स इट्स अ डी फोर तो ओके यू डोंट हैव टू गिव द लेबल ऐसे नेगेटिव बट इट्स पॉजिटिव ओके टू पॉइंट टू नाइन नेगेटिव वो पॉजिटिव लार्ज वन सी लार्ज वन माइनस स्मॉल वन नो स्मॉल वन माइनस लार्ज वन जैसे मैं तो यू कैन थिंक अबाउट इट्स ऑपोजिट ओके सो इट्स गोइंग टू ग्रो फ्रॉम टू 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 पॉइंट फाइव तो डू वी गेट दैट वैल्यू टू 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 पॉइंट फाइव फ्रॉम दिस Yeah, we get no two 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 point five. No, no. This one, no. let me see one more. Two point five. Yes. Yeah, two point five. Two 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 point five. Two to two point five. So this one, I don't think that uh, N B N A. Let me look at N plus their product. Root of d squared. D squared divided by two times. That's it. Two times this. I don't think that you really need this part. No, not this part. You don't really need, but you, if you get the more accurate answer, you can add that one. But you don't need this one more than enough. Okay? That part more than enough. This that's the one. See, okay? you still get it. Okay, two to two point five. See, two to two point five. Okay, same thing. So then interpret that one. You see, there's a 99 likelihood or probability or chance that the interval estimate of cohens D contain the true population C. And yes, because that uh, do you believe there's a relationship between parameter mean and diagnosis? Why not? Yes, since cohens D and B1 slope mean difference between benign and malignant uh, diagnosis do not contain zero. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis and infer that there is a relationship between primary mean and diagnosis. How does this information get you? One or five? Then what? Find the linear model parameter outcome and text the mean as explanatory variable. See? Okay. Then confit will give you pretty much all the information that you really need. हमारे But are the parameter estimate parameter? There are parameters yeah? around the slope and around your slope. Okay? So ninety five percent around the slope. Okay. Okay. So we did that one earlier. I think this is same thing. Okay. We did this one to the text the meter mean and text the mean. Large scale. We talk about this one. I don't think that we have to go in detail, but I can run. Okay, sorry. Uh, I need it. You know, the supernova get cancelled out. Okay, I'm gonna stop again. Okay, so this one we have to do. 
It's called the texture model or regression. Same thing we did there, you know, okay. That's okay, texture model. We can run, get the summary, get the supernova, ANOVA texture.table. This one, this is one ANOVA texture table. I think I need that one for something. Okay. We did this one manually, can I remember? We all we did this already. This time. But that's okay. Now let's look at this one. Okay, table. And then part B that they're gonna do the bootstrapping. Bootstrapping, okay. We boot. No. What happened to this one? This is a bad model. No. Let me go up over there at a certain point. Okay. Hmm. Okay, anyway. Here. Yeah, the data not being bootstrapped. Yeah, that's the problem. Okay, so data not being bootstrapped. That's the problem. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, this is the problem. Not bootstrapped. Okay. That's the problem. Mm. We do very neat an infection in sample. This one. Okay. Yeah, so, so let's check that one with the, yeah, that's a confidence interval. Did we get the confidence interval? Um, for this one. Let's um, one. Without bootstrapping, summary, super no, no, that one, no. Before bootstrapping, before bootstrapping, can we get the confidence interval? Yeah, I'm going to go back to number four. Before bootstrap, something. Yeah, yeah, we run that one first. Confirm dot default, confirm default. Okay, so here B by confirm. No, no, no. Oh, that one. This one, this one here. Okay, they straight ask us to go to the bootstrap. Okay? Construct, see, 95 percent construct. They are using bootstrap. Okay, before bootstrap, I'm going to run this one and this one called the texture model. Okay. Next model list and see whether they consistent. Yeah. Okay. Now let's go and boost up and get run. Okay. Forty seven to sixty four, forty seven to sixty four, one to one point four to three point. Okay. Yeah, same thing. Good. 
It's good. Oh, you can bootstrap like this. As I said that this doesn't work. I'm gonna get this one. Copy and I'm gonna go to my sandbox. Okay. This time you don't have a diagnosis for the explanatory variable, you have a texture, okay? One point four to two three. See, one point four to two three. Two point three. Sorry, one point four to two point three. Okay, that's right. See, another way to get this done. And then B one. Uh, what are the units of the confidence interval? The unit of the slope is a unit of the perimeter mean per unit of the texture. See, is a unit of perimeter mean per unit of texture mean. Okay. And we part two, how would you interpret the confidence interval? There's a nine point cost. Likely though probability of chance that the interval estimate of slope, okay, this one contain the true population. And B2, construct confidence interval using the model. Using the model means you can go to see confident. That's what they say. Okay. So then uh, you can construct that one in another way too. See, there are p-values, standard error, margin of error. See, those everything that can be calculated by hand too. Again, okay. see, so I'm going to use this one. See, see, see. we saw already saw the mean squared error, favorite statistics. And from this one, we're going to get this one minus this one. Where are this one? Now we have to figure out what that uh, uh, confidence into a manual, how could you gonna get that one? Okay. Look at here. From this one, go to this one, B1 plus margin of error. Or into the computer. Okay. That's a kind of the same thing, B naught. Or intercept, same thing. But anyhow, okay, let's look at this one. Okay, I want to look at this confidence interval. Oh, this one. Okay, this is what I'm trying to do. Okay, now, this is number five, five, uh, five D. Common name of those two. See, look at how could you gonna write the confidence interval? Confidence interval for being data node is nothing but data node. See, ups, okay, ups, 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 ready. Also minus CC and standard data of B naught. Confidence interval for beta one is nothing but beta one of B one of C C standard error of B naught. This is B naught. That's the formula I say. This one B one C C times standard error of B one where look at where standard error of B naught is nothing but see nothing but mean squared error times one over n plus x bar squared over 
n minus 1 is 6. So, standard error of D1, not in one. Mean squared error. One more. N minus one is six squared. That's the variance of the X variable. Okay. It's bad, okay, not here, not here, okay, it's six. Those are the two formula being plugged into here, okay? that's why we calculate it. Okay, so it means that I know what text I get the residual, okay, messy, favorite statistic, okay. Texture means, texture means that because I need the texture because that's the x variable. Standard error is nothing but error of beta 1 is nothing but texture mean n minus 1 uh, mean squared error divided by mean squared error times. Uh, Minus one. I'm 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 on this one. Okay, I'm on this one. Mean squared error divided by this one. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. Mean squared error divided by texture step. And this one shows the end. Texture mean every steps of the texture mean. This is same as n minus 1 and it's what variance okay, standard deviation being squared okay. standard deviation being squared that's the formula I set up over here then I get that C then I put to the margin of the margin of the okay. then I want the V1 V1 if I want, I can call from here, see. But my I, that V one, I say go to this one and recall it, and plus minus and plus. So that one doesn't work from my one. So therefore, I'm gonna go ahead and run on this one. But texture model, I haven't run yet. Texture model over here, see. Yes, so. And the lower bound and upper bound. Hmm. Oh, margin of error. I'm sorry, the margin of error. This one. Um, I had to get all this. Margin of error means standard data, standard data means this one. This means that I'm going to put all these things. Yeah, because we need the ANOVA table. ANOVA table. This one. This one, ANOVA. This one.
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go and text them also. I'm going to from that one. This is one. Let's text each other and then I'm going to text them also. Uh, is the text in the Back one more time. Oh my goodness. Oh, I don't know. Uh, we have to do today. One one point four and two point three. One point four and two point three. Okay. One point four and two point three. You got it. In a similar fashion, you do the same thing for what? With the beta naught, if you want beta naught, you can do that one too. The last two inches. Last inch. Forty seven to sixty four. Forty seven to sixty. Um, plus six square divided by two minus one. It just says, but no, I don't see that. It's not right. Mm -hmm. Sixty four will be and will be about go about this is what happened. E1 concept compute confidence in the intercept. Y intercept. Oh, this one only, no? And this is the one I need. But I don't see it. See? That's the one I need. Yes. Sixty four forty seven. Sixty four forty seven. Yeah, see. Sixty four forty seven. That's right, see, manual even you get the same thing. And the part B 
Uh, B, question number two, you can fill in the population, does not see the year. Since the hypothesis error of slope, which is zero, does not contain within this known confidence interval, we can say that that uh, the population does not see. Okay. So then you can do the same thing for the 75%. See? 75% part C, same similar fashion. And part C, one, two, three. One, two, three, can do. And then part D, what is the effect size expressed as pre, interpret pre of the model? See, pre of the model. If you want, you can even build up the confidence interval for pre as well. See? Let's go ahead and re-sample. See, see, pre confidence interval if you want. See, R squared means that 0.10. 10, 80, 89. Can we check that one with the super, supernova? Here, see, 1086, see, 1086. And its confidence interval also being given. Also being given. See, how do you do this on manually? See, free. Manually, see, with supernova free, we can get the free value. That's so free. But what is this one? See, that's the standard rate. Okay. Let's have a look at it. This is free. Now let's go to the free. It's the only let's say four times. They don't know us about that one, that, but they ask us there in the relation to interpret the tree of the model. Okay. What is the effect size? I'm trying to even write the confidence interval for that one. Okay, since we see the confidence interval, I want to give you the formula related to that one. So this one related to phi d, okay? Phi d. Say phi d. Phi, phi d. So confidence interval for free. Capital R squared is Three of as we see time sense with the free where the standard deviation of free is nothing but okay. No, it's not right. It's not right. I the confidence interval of three equals R square is the obs plus so minus C C standard error of the average. Yeah. 
and L of T R equals this one also minus C C times standard error of the R then P R equals standard error of PRV equals okay. Okay, the square root square root four times we are four times P R V. Okay, I'm gonna write the R squared. Okay, my coming with R squared one minus R squared. Texture steps. So N minus one, N minus two, N minus two divided by N minus two divided by N squared minus one. n squared minus 1 times n plus 3. Okay. That is the one we have. See, that's the standard table. For that guy, see, we, we know that we within. You can get the pre from that one or pre one minus pre. See, we cannot get the pre from this one because of that. I'm gonna bring this one two. I'm gonna bring this two. Okay, you know that confidence interval. So pre is this one 16, sorry, over six to 16. Okay, so here then run on this one. No, no, there's something wrong. No, it's not complete here. Yeah, there you go. So this one all the way up to here. Okay. Four things. I'm gonna run one more time. That's okay. The last answer. Both two answers should be the upper and lower bound. Lower and upper bound, not the bound, doesn't matter. And then around 11, see, this one around 11, 10 and 11. But we got on this one 10 and this one 16 16 and 6 and 6 
and then let them drag it around. Okay, close by. Okay, just a bit close by. See, something like that. So that you will be the relationship between text and mean and that one. See? Since the hypothesized value of tree, which is zero, does not contain within the confidence interval, we reject as not population tree and infer that the population tree is not zero at the level of significant point of five. Therefore, we can conclude that there's a relation and the text mean but very weak as the observed sample tree is around seven percent. Then comparing the Q4 and Q5, which do you believe predicts the most? You run both regression models and you run the other one. And then you decide which one's going to give the F value, see, F value, and 0.10, 55, see, 69. F value small, pre value high, pre value low, so see, both low. Both high. See? So which where which model would be the best model? Best model would be definitely see? Uh, regression model 69, no, 600.55. See this model, no, it's been explained by what? Two so group model, see, two so group model. That okay, so that's all that I'm gonna go ahead and stop over here, and then uh, we're gonna have this. Uh, and, uh, see you guys, you guys have a good night, and then I'll see you guys on have a nice weekend. See you guys on Monday. Take care, bye bye.